Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to your sixth session of Akalit. Um, please make sure that you complete the register in the chat before you leave today. And today's session, we're going to be discussing amortization and I hope you have your financial calculators, but if you don't have your financial calculator, it's fine. I will show you how to do the questions manually, but when we do activities, sometimes you might not be able to catch up with us because we only have one hour, 30 minutes. I will try my level best to accommodate both those with the calculator, with the financial calculator, and those without a financial calculator. It is very important that we do that so that we don't leave anyone behind. <clears throat> so in terms of the session, next week will be the last session that we're going to have. Um, and I'm assuming we, uh, or not assuming, I'm planning to do manipulation of equation, but I'm going to extend it. Uh, not just focusing on the just how to solve for X or how to solve for Y, but include simultaneous equations, include uh, inequalities as well. So it, those who are doing BNU, you might find some of the content not re uh, relevant to you and some of the content might be relevant for you. But because you're doing BNU, the chances are next year you will be doing QMI or next semester you will be doing QMI. Therefore, it means it's easier when you have the knowledge and the skill and it will be something that you're not seeing for the first time. So bear with me on that note because that is our last session in terms of actual uh, academic literacy and then I planned on doing exam preparations because here we've got two modules. We're going to split it on the 6th of June. Only those who are doing BNU, you must come to the session. Um, I will also share this uh, on the WhatsApp groups as well. And then on the 13th of June, only those who are doing QMI can also attend that because then the BNU students, you would have written your BNU exam as well. Or a day or so you would have written your exam. OK, so let's get on with today's session, which is amortization. <clears throat> before we do that, do you have any questions for me? Before we begin? Any questions? Any comments? No questions, no comments for me. Then we can start the session. Like I said, we're going to be doing amortization and I expect you have your calculator and you need to also know and understand how to answer the questions without using your calculator as well in terms of using formulas. By the end of the session today, we should be able to calculate payments of a, a mortgage or a loan, or it can be for a car or something. So you should be able to calculate payments of a loan and some of the concepts we have learned them the last time. If you would watch annuities, annuities are payments and we are going to continue and doing the same to calculate the pay payment. We're going to use the annuities, but we also going to use the present value of an annuity formula to calculate the payment for amortization. Once you have your payment, then you are able to set up your amortization schedule and in terms of your modules you should be able to answer the questions 
based on your amortization schedule as well. So we're going to, to sh I'm going to show you how to set up the amortization schedule uh, manually. And also I'm going to show you how to set it up using your calculator. And remember with the calculator, always the steps are the same. The first step you do is to clear your calculator from any stored values. So we're going to follow the same concepts that we have been doing the whole time. Okay, so what is amortization in general? Amortization are just all your liabilities, both the principal and interest that are paid by a sequential equal payment that are made at an equal interval of time. So in your modules, QMI or BNU, you also need to realize that they will not ask you to change interest rate. They will not ask you to change the number of payments while you are working on the problem. Only the next question might ask you if interest rate has changed and then you can just adjust. But you go into your interest and your payments will stay the same for the duration of the period of your amortization in your module. Okay, so in terms of the payment, we're going to use the present value of an annuity, and that is the formula to calculate. Don't ask me what this A and I mean, because then this is your payment is your principal, your present value divided by the accumulation factor of an annuity, which is uh, one plus I. It's uh, which is 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by i times 1 plus i to the power of n. And that is your accumulation factor, which is this. So you must remember the formula for present value of an annuity. So as the outstanding principal decreases with your payment, the interest you owe at every period will also decrease because the interest we're going to always calculate it using the principal amount as well the fraction of the payment which is available for reducing the principal will increase with the time so it means when you look at your principal value which will be the last column that we work on Every time you make a payment, that value will always increase with time because that is the value without payment that, uh, sorry, without interest, that is the amount that you are paying towards your loan, excluding interest, and it will increase with time. Then to create an amortization schedule based on all the information that I just explained to you, you need to have a period which it can be quarterly, yearly, by annually. In this instance, my table shows the year, but this is generally your period. So how many amortized values you're going to have? So if it's quarterly and it's for one year, therefore it means you will have periods. There will be four of them because it's yearly, it's four. If it's two years, that means you will have eight um, period, which means those will be the eight times that you will make the payment. Your first column after the period will be your outstanding principal or your present value, or we can call it the outstanding principal, or we can call it the closing balance, or we can call it the opening balance. It will be an opening balance for that year, but it, in the following year, it will be a closing balance and also an opening balance for the previous year. Your B will be your interest. We always calculate it using the simple interest rate. And I will explain more on this later on when we do some activities. We always use simple interest. Remember, simple interest is I is equals to P times R times T. Your payment, that will be your present value of an annuity payment that you would have calculated. And that is the first thing that you calculate. And then the principal repaid, it is just your payment minus the interest. So 
what I just explained, the first step that you do with amortization schedule is to draw up a table that has the period OP, which is outstanding principal, your interest, your payment, and principal repaid. Once you have that table, the first step that you do is actually is to calculate the periods. You populate your periods depending if it is compounded monthly and for five years, that means you will write 60 rows, one up to 60 on your amortization schedule. That will be your period. Then the first step that you will do is to calculate the payment. Once you have calculated the payment, then you can calculate your interest by using the simple interest. Your T will always be equivalent to one or equals to one because it's for that year or that period or that um, time, which will always be equals to one. The others might change. Your P will be your outstanding principal at that point. Your R will be the rate divided by the compounding periods because it will be compounded. So your rate, you will have to divide by the compounding periods. Your period T will always be equals to one. It doesn't change, it will always be one. Your principal repaid will be your payment, the amount you calculated in terms of the payment, minus your interest. And the other thing that you need to also remember is once you put the periods, all 60 of them, you also calculate your payment and your payment, you complete it. It stays the same for the entire duration of your loan. So if your payment was 200, you're going to write here 200, 200 up until you get to row number 60. If there was five years, uh, compounded 12 uh, monthly, uh, so it will be 60. You will write the same 260 times. And your outstanding principal will be your previous outstanding principal minus your principal repaid, and that will give you your closing balance. So for line number one, it will be your opening balance will be your present value of the amount that you are loaning. So if you take a loan of 250,000, the first row will be 250,000. Then you calculate your payment on that 250,000. You calculate the interest and from the payment and the interest, you calculate the principal repaid. And from the principal repaid, we need to create a closing balance in line number two. The closing balance will be your opening balance on your first line minus the principal repaid of the first line. And that gives you your closing balance. But it is also your opening balance for year number two or for the period number two. So period number two, you go again, you calculate the interest based on that period number two because your payment is already there. You just calculate the interest on period number two and then calculate the principal repaid by subtracting your payment minus your interest. That gives you your principal paid for payment number two. Once you have payment number two done with the principal repaid, you go to line number three. You want to create a closing balance by taking the opening balance of line number two, subtract the principal repaid of line number two, that gives you the closing balance. And I know that I am talking like, as if like I'm selling something. Let's do it so that you can see what I am referring to. Let's draw up an amortization schedule for a loan of 4,000 for three years at 15% per annum, compounded half yearly, and it is repayable in six half yearly payments. The first step of everything that you do is read the statement, make sure that you understand what the statement is asking you to do, and identify the facts that are given in the statement, 
highlight them, write them, draw them, do whatever you want to do with them, but make sure that you understand what is given. And if there are any formulas, make sure that you write that formula down and use that formula to calculate. Okay, so we now know what we need to be doing because the statement said we need to draw up an amortization schedule. In the exam, they will not ask you to draw up an amortization schedule, right? They will ask you question based on an amortization schedule, but you need to know how to develop one or how to draw up one. What else are we given? We are told that the loan is of 4,000. That is means that means they have given us the present value. And they are telling us that it's for three years. Therefore, our period T is three years. And what else? And they telling us that the rate is 15%. So it means our R is 0 0.15. What else? And they say it is compounded half yearly. So my compounding period, half yearly means two, twice in a year. Half yearly, they're splitting the year into two parts. So therefore, it is two. And since I know what my compounding periods are, I need to come to my year, which is T. I must multiply it with the compounding periods and I must divide Let's use the division sign, the, the mathematical division. I must divide this by two. And they say it is repayable in six half year payments. So, which means there will be six of them because three times two is six. Okay, so I've identified everything I need. The first step of amortization schedule is to draw up the amortization, but now I'm going to first calculate my present value of an annuity. I'm given my P, I need to calculate R, and I have my interest, I have my periods, then I can just substitute. So I've already identified everything I need. I can substitute into the formula. So like I said previously, the I or the R, R, I, interest, same, T N, depending on which one they use in your book, um, T O N. So here we're using N. So our interest is 0 0.15 divided by 2, which is 0 0.075. 0 0.075. And your N is 3 times 2, which is 6. So we just substitute into the formula and we calculate the period, the payment. And our payment. It's 852. Right. Now let's draw up the amortization because now we have the payment. So we go, we take the payment that we have, we draw up our table, and I complete all the periods. Remember I told you that? The first step you do is draw up, write the period, the present value of the first one or the outstanding principal of the first one will be the present value that was given. So there I write it down. The next step is for me to complete the entire table with the payments because we did calculate the payments and I just calculate the payments or complete the payment and I calculate the total of those payments, therefore it means I'm going to be making oh, uh, 5,113.08 payments. Okay, for six years, for the two years that, or three years that we have, because then those will be the payments. Okay, now the next step is to calculate the interest. That's the second one. So our interest, remember we use our interest, we use the present value times the rate times the periods. So it's 4,000 times our rate is 0, 0.075 times 1. Always remember it will be, T will be equals to 1 all the time. And that 
will give us so the first thing we calculate is the interest so those are the formulas that we're going to be using so we say 4000 times 0, 0,075 times 1 oh come on i don't want to forget the whole table as yet and that should be equals to if you have a calculator i think it's 300 is my calculator now do you do, do, do what is the answer 300 is 300 right so we go into write it here that will be 300 now to calculate the principal repaid we say 85218 minus 300 which will be equals to 5 5.218. That will be the answer. 5.852.18 minus 300 will give us 552.18. Now, to get to the outstanding principal or the closing balance here, we say 4,000 minus. So we say outstanding principal minus the principal amount we paid. 4,000 minus 552.18. We say 4,000 minus 552.18. And it gives us three four four seven point eight two we need to go back and calculate the interest so calculating the interest here instead of using four thousand now we use three four 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 seven point eight two and therefore we're going to get times point zero seven five times one and that gives us two five eight point five nine point five nine and to calculate the principal repaid we say uh eight five two minus two five minus two five eight point uh, five nine And we get the principal repaid of 593.59. And to get the for the for the next one, we do the same. 3447.82 minus 593.59. We write the answer there, we calculate the interest and we can continue and continue and continue to complete the entire table and you will have all your values completed. And you can add all your interest. They will give you the total interest amount you paid for the duration of the period for those six half yearlies. And you will have the total in terms of your principal repaid which is the same, the total should be the same as your opening balance at the beginning, or it should be the same as your present value. If you don't get the same when you add all of them, then it means that you are doing something wrong. Okay, so that is your amortization schedule. What can you do with this amortization schedule? So. They will ask you a lot of questions. For example, they might ask you, what is the payment or not the payment? What is the interest amount you would pay after 
making three payments. After I make three payments, the interest that I would have paid would be that amount. Or they can ask you, what is the closing balance after four payments? After I make the four payments, which is at that point, what will be my closing balance? Because I made this payment, my closing balance will be 1,530. Remember that. So your closing balance will be the opening balance of the next line. So after four payments, because that will be my fourth payment, my closing balance will be 1,530. If they ask you, what is your opening balance when you make four payments? Then your opening balance is 2,216. So you can use this to answer the questions. They might ask you, what is the total amount of payment that you would have paid? Or what is the total interest you would have paid? Your total interest will be 1,100. 118. Otherwise, you can calculate your total interest. So your total interest can also be your sum of all the payments, which is 5113.08 minus your principal amount, which is your principal value. And that should also give you 113.08. That's all what they can ask you. What is the total payment that you would have made? Or what is the future pay or future value of this amortization? Amortized value, then your future value will be 5,113. That is if you're going to be calculating manual, but that does not mean those with the financial calculators, you cannot also understand this because sometimes I'm going to do that ex example here. Sometimes they can give you an amortization schedule and they might have blocked out this value and they call this value A and they might have blocked out this value. Uh, sorry, we, I can't see your screen. I'm not sure what's going on. I also don't know what went on. Um, the screen is off. When when was the screen off? When you, when you were trying to finish up on the <clears throat> on the last uh, uh, total interest. On the total you, interest. You were, yes, you were calculating the total interest. Oh, okay. And then the, the screen went blank. Uh, Oh, sorry about that. Uh, we, we can also catch up on it later on. So I'm saying also, if they give you an amortization schedule and they blank, blanked out all these values, and they say this is A and this is B, you should be able to answer these questions because you cannot answer A if you didn't answer B. Or oh, let's say also this is blanked out. Let's assume that this is also blanked out because you can answer A even if you don't have B. So let's say all these are blanked out and they say it is A, B, C. So in order for you to calculate B, uh, sorry, a, you need to calculate C. In order for you to answer C, you need to answer B. So to answer B, you need to know that it is your B. B is PRT, which will be 2216.12 multiply by 0 0.075 multiply by 1. That should give you the value of B, which is 116. 
in order to answer A, we need to answer B, C. And we know what C is. C is 852.18 minus 166.21. And that will give you the answer that you are looking for, which is 685.97. And then you can answer A, and your A will be 2216.12 minus 685.97. And that should give you the answer of 153015. So regardless of whether you have a financial calculator, you need to be able to know how to complete the amortization schedule. Finish and clear. Let's move on to those with a financial calculator and see how we can help them to do the same. Oh, this is what I was explaining right now. But how do we do amortization schedule when we're using a financial calculator? Same question, same, same, same. We first needs to clear our calculator from any stored value. So we need to also identify what it's given here. So we are asked to draw up an amortization schedule. So on a piece of paper, you can draw up your table. We know that this is our present value. That is PV. We know that this is our N. We know that this is our I slash Y. And we know that it is compounded P slash Y. It is compounded half yearly, which is two. The first step that we need to do is to clear our calculator from any stored values and calculate the present value. Plus or minus, also we do a second function, p slash y. Uh, we press two, we go ENT, and that is your compounding period. Then you go on and off your calculator. Then we go plus or minus present value of 4,000, which is our PV. I forgot on this slide to have my PV. That is your PV. Then we put three second function times P slash Y, which is three second function N, N again. And that is when we store the periods. And we go 15. I and Y to store the interest, and we compute PMT. So COMP PMT. And once we have our payment, then we can amortize this value. On your screen, you will have your payment of 852.18. which is the same as what we had previously. And you can draw up the schedule and you complete everything that everyone from the manual calculations also did. Um, we complete that and then we go and start to amortize the payment. Completing the table, then we're going to amortize the payment. To amortize your payment, you press amort and press one. So you will press AMRT and then press one to say, I am now amortizing my first payment. Then you press down arrow and then press one and say, I am confirming that I am amortizing my first payment. And then you press enter and you press down arrow, it should give you the balance, which is your closing balance after payment number one, which will be your opening balance at line number two, at payment number two. The answer will be in the negative. Don't worry about the negative in front. So you will just write 3447.82. And then you go press the down arrow, it will give you the principal amount, which will be the last column on your amortization schedule. 
and then press the down arrow, it will give you the interest. So on your calculator, it works different to when you are calculating manual. Remember when we calculate in manual, the first thing we do is calculating the payment, which is similar. Then we calculate the interest here. It gives you the balance before interest. So do interest, principal, and then the balance. So on your calculator, it does things in reverse. It goes interest, principal, uh, it goes balance, principal, interest. And then you press down arrow, and now we want to amortize the second payment. We press down arrow, to enter, down arrow, to enter. So you need to repeat the steps twice. So that the first one says, I am doing this. The second one will say, I am confirming that I am amortizing my second payment. And then you will do the same, repeat the steps so many times. So you will press your down arrow and it will give you the balance of 285 down arrow it will give you your principal which will give you the principal of the first the second line down arrow it will give you the interest of the second line and you go down arrow three enter down arrow three enter and we are amortizing the third payment and it will give you your Closing balance, principal repaid of the third payment, interest of the third payment, and you continue like that, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow, until you are at the end. And that's how easy it is to do an amortization schedule on your calculator. Now, let's look at what if they're asking you to do this. On your calculator, the same thing that we did with the previous one. So you are using your financial calculator, right? You are given the statement which looks like this that says draw up an amortization schedule of these, but they're asking you what is the payment, what is the principal balance after five payments, uh, after four payments, right? What is the outstanding principal after four payments. The first thing you need to do in everything is to calculate your payments first. So you will go and follow the steps, second function CA, second function PNY, two ENT, on and off your calculator, plus or minus, you put in the 4,000 uh, and you say it's the present value, you go 15, which is I and Y, three, second function, and N again, which is the period, and then you say comp PMT, and it gives you the payment. And then you go ahead and press amort. So you will start with the amort nicely, and then you say one. Remember, we're looking for OP after four payments, right? So we say amot one, down arrow, one, E, N, T. And without even looking at the values, you just press down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. Once it gets to interest on your down arrow, then you press down arrow. Instead of going to two, you don't do two, you say four, E, N, T. And you say down arrow for E and T. And you go down arrow, it will give you the answer you are looking for. Those who are calculating manually, they have to do the whole table up until they get to four in order for them to get to A. So they will have to complete all these values, all of them, all of them, before they get to four. On your financial calculator, you do not have to. You need to calculate your payment. You calculate your first amortization 
your first payment, you need to amortize your first payment before you can answer any of the other questions. And if they ask you, what is the, what is the payment, no, the interest? What will be the interest that you would have paid after four payments? And that will be C. So you will just press down arrow and then down arrow again, and that will give you your pay, your interest. Remember, this is your principal repaid. And the next one will be your payment, your interest. And if they ask you uh, what is their total payment, you have your payment, you can just add them all up or you can go back and put, um, if they ask you what is your total payment on your calculators, you have your payment so you can go and say uh, comp again, you can go back to comp and say PMT again, and it will give you the payment and then multiply that payment by six. And that will give you six, uh, five, one, one, three. If they say, what is your total interest? That you cannot do unless if you have the entire schedule, but you can calculate what your total interest is because if you calculated your total payments, which will be 5,000, you can just subtract 4,000 and that will give you your total payment. Easy, 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 easy. So let's look at more exercises. Do you have any question before we move to the exercises? Hi, Lizzie. Yes. Yes, Um, I wanted to find out quickly before we do, when using the calculator, before we, we can do anything, do we uh, calculate the payment? That's the first thing. When we work with amortization, you will realize as well, when you answer your assignment questions or your exam questions, the first question that they will ask you on amortization will be payment. We'll look at the, okay. some of the examples, how the questions follow each other. Okay. and what you need to look up for. So, but the first thing that they will ask you when you're doing amortization is calculate or how, um, what will be the payment, the minimum payment or the amount of payments that they need to make. That is your, um, your, your first question. Then the second question might ask you, what is the outstanding balance after five years? That's the other thing that is very tricky with the questions. So, for example, if they say, what is the payment after two years? Remember there, it said three years. If they say two years, this is not two years. That is still one year. Remember, a year is made up of two halves. So two payments will be done in one year. So you need to be aware of that. That this is three years because we're making two payments every year. So if they ask you, what is the outstanding principal after two years? Not four payments, after two years. After two years, what is the opening principal after two years, which is the same as after payment number four? Right. So you need to be aware of those scenarios when they ask you questions like that. So let's look at examples. Let's go and look at more exercises. So here we can work together. Those with a calculator and those without a calculator. We need to be on the same page. Get to see, are there any questions on the chat? Is there anyone who's asking a question? No questions. Please make sure that you complete the register. I'm just going to post it again on the chat. Before you leave today, make sure that you have completed that register. 
Okay, so let's go to our exercise. A farmer needs 250,000 to purchase a 10 ton trailer. The bank approves the loan for the full amount. The interest rate is 18% per annum or per year, compounded monthly, and the loan has to be paid off in five years time. Determine the farmer's minimum monthly salary. So this might be question number 22 on your exam. Usually amortization are your last questions in the, on the exam paper. So this is question number 22. So it means question 23, 24, and 25 might be related to the same statement that we are reading. So the first question asks, determine the farmer's minimum monthly payment. So what have we given? The present value. So we're going to start with those who are calculating manual, right? Present value, which is P, and we know that the bank approves all the full amount, so its P is 250. Our interest I is 0, 0,18. And we know that it is compounded monthly. What is compounded monthly? How many? <coughs> there will be 12. How many compounding periods? There will be 12. So it means our interest, we will have to go and divide it by 12. And the loan has to be paid in five years time. So which is our N, which will be five times 12. Therefore, it is 60. And what is 0, 0,18 divide? So, 0, 0,18. 18.18 divided by by 12 divided by 12 which is 0, 0,0 0, 0, 0,015 that is our interest so those who are calculating manually then you will use your formula i'm not going to write the actual formula as it appears but i'm going to write the formula as R is equals to your P divided by the accumulation factor so that it's easy for you to substitute into that formula. 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 divided by I times 1 plus I to the power N. So we just substitute into this formula. Our principal or Present value is two five zero 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 divided by everything in the accumulation factor will be one plus zero point zero one five to the power sixty minus one divided by zero comma zero one five times one plus zero comma zero one five to the power 60 and you can calculate and give me the answer later on those who are using financial calculator we do the same remember the steps are always the same i'm gonna change oh no let me not change the, the pen i'm going to use the same pen so remember the steps are the same present value is our pv Interest is our I slash Y. Compounding periods, there are 12. And N is 5. Remember, we keep the values as they are. And N is 5. We don't multiply by 12. So you go. Second function, CA. Second function, P slash Y, which is on top of I and Y. Put in the compounding periods and then press E and T. Go on and off your calculator, plus or minus. Put in the value of the present value and, and then press present value. Then we go, what is the value of our interest? Put it in the right place. What is the value of our period? 
second function and you know me i'm lazy to type i'm just gonna press n n again so you press n twice in this instance which is times p y which we multiply with the compounding periods and then we're going to say c o m p p m t so are you done Let's do the calculations. And then you can give me the answer when you are done. I'm done. Okay, you must write your answer in the chat. And if everyone agrees with your answer, you know what we do usually. We like, we thumb, uh, what do you call that thumb, what? Some like, we live it, we laugh at it, or we are surprised by it, or we are sad, but we never become angry. So you can use any of those emojis. Like, love, like, love, love, heart, uh, heart it, laugh at it. I'm not sure even laughing at it will be a good idea. Surprised by it, sad by it, but never angry. So if you agree with Mildred, let's see how many people we've got about 20. We've got about 24 people on here, so they should be at least different answers, different emojis, if possible. Give us what you have in front of you. Aibo, something is weird. Somebody's answering with my name and I haven't answered. Who is you who's answering with your name? Mildred M, it's me, but the person is already answered and no, I haven't answered. No, there are two Mildred. Sorry. There is Mildred. Oh. <laughs> Mildred okay. Matebula is the one who's answering. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh qmi guest huh that's very nice we have a guest so come 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 so we have i'm gonna say seven half we are not even half of the people who are here i want everyone to give their opinion on the answer so i'm gonna take it some of you don't know how to answer it because if you are not liking the answer or commenting or giving us your own answer, it means you haven't calculated it. So it's fine. Let's answer the question. So what is those who are cal who calculated manual? Probably you had the same answer as those who calculated uh, using a financial calculator. So those who use the financial calculator, I'm going to ask you first, what are the values that I need to put in the blocks to see that you did the right thing? So second function PY, what was the value that you put in here? Well, okay. Plus or minus? Two hundred and fifty thousand and I and Y eighteen percent. Eighteen and your periods will be five. That will be five. And when you press C O M P P M T and the answer will be equals to option four, six thousand. 348 and once you have that answer you don't remove anything from your calculator you hold on 
you don't delete, you don't do anything, you just leave the answer as is and look at it. Those who are calculating manually, you'd also have gotten the answer of 6348.36. Now, you will have to do some work because you don't have all the answers. The second question says, refers to farmer's question number one, which <clears throat> means in your exam paper, you are referring to question number 22. So now you are in question number 23. It says refers to question number 22. What will the outstanding balance of the farmer's loan be at the end of third year? Right. Third year. Those with financial calculator, it will be easy. I'm going to come back to you. Those without financial calculators, therefore it means you will have to go and draw up an amortization schedule somewhere, either in Excel or somewhere. So you will have your period, your opening balance, your interest. I'm just going to put the I for interest, not I, I, I as for interest, and PMT for payment and PR for principal repaid. Right, you're going to say, because the, let's go back to our question number 22. So question 22 was 60, right? And it's monthly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up until 60. Your payment, you calculated it, and it was 6,348. 6,348 point. What was the point? 36. Six. Point yeah. 36. And your opening balance was 250,000. Right. You need to calculate your interest by saying 250 times what was our interest? 0 0.015. So to calculate this value, you will say 250,000 times 0 0.015 times 1. It should give you your interest here. To calculate this value here, you will say 648 minus the, let's make it the question mark. To calculate the question mark, so this is to calculate the point, right? To calculate the question mark, you will say PMT minus the point, which is that, that answer that you have there. And you will have to do the same. So let's go to this one. I will make it a block. To calculate the block, to calculate the block, you will say 250,000 minus the question mark, and that will give you your thing. And then you go back, calculate the point by using the, two, the value there, by calculating the, because this payment will stay the same for all the years. To so calculate the question mark and then calculate this, and until you get to the third year. You know where is the third year? It's monthly, so there should be 12 rows of this. And you should also have calculated another 12 rows because this is year one, year two, and the third year will be after 12, 36. So somewhere here, there will be 36. That will be the last that you are calculating, 36. What is the outstanding balance on the farmer's loan at the end of third year? Year one is made up of 12 months, year two is made up of 12 months, year three is made up of 12 months, so at the end of year three, which is the third year, will be at the end of 36. So you will have to complete this 36 times in order to get the value. Now, right. I'm done with you, so because you've got all the time. 
until the session is over to complete the amortization schedule. So it means in the exam, you will not be able to answer that question as quickly as possible. Those with a financial calculator, here is the thing. You will say second function C or you have already the amortized the, the value. We need to amortize the payment. So you still have your payment. If you removed your payment, just go back and say comp PMT and your payment should still appear on your calculator. Once you have that payment, then you press amort, AMRT, you press one, press down arrow, down it. You press amount one and you press down arrow one and then you press E and T. Then you're going to press down arrow, down arrow, you're going to press it twice, three times, because the first one it will give you the balance, the principal repaid, and it will give you your interest. And you will get to down arrow. Now it says at the end of the third year, three times 12 is 36. At the end of third year, it's after 36 payments. So you're going to press down arrow, 36, E and T, down arrow, 36, E and T, down arrow, and it will say the balance, and that is the answer we are looking for. And what do we have? Let's see how, how many answers. No answer. No answer. I got option three. Hundred and twenty-seven. So the answer will be hundred and twenty-seven thousand one hundred and sixty point one six. Those who are using um, the manual calculator. On the notes, I'm going to stop sharing now. I'm going to stop sharing so that I can share my entire screen. Oh gosh, now people are going to see my WhatsApp. Let me close my entire screen. People are going to see because this is published. Ah, oh gosh. Um, okay. That's what I'm looking for. So those, I'm just going to show you. Those who are calculating manually, you just go to the schedule link. You go to open class folders. And there is a. Uh, 
I've just placed the amortization hack thingy there, which you can use. So, but you will have to change certain things on here to enable you to use this as your calculator. So I've just made it. So let's go and see if I can get it to work the way it's supposed to. Interest is 18. And the number of years here, you need to be very careful because I'm using already the um, compounded possibly. Let me just see the number of years if it's five. And the compounding periods, if they are 12. Just want to see if I'm getting it right. So you will have to use it that way. And I'm just explaining that this three things are just calculations. So the payment, what I do here, it is just this formula that I've calculated. The top part of the formula calculates that. The bottom part of the formula is this complex calculation that is happening there at the bottom. Can you see that? Um, that's all what I'm doing, but you can see that the payment, you get the same as what you have when you calculate manually. And the amortization schedule is completed. Now, the challenge with this is it will not give you up until where you want because then there will be some other things that happens here at the bottom. I have done it up to 60. So you can also fix it because it's just calculations on how you go and amend each one of them. So I just did it up to 60. But after, so it will give you the same answer. So after 36 months, or after 36 payments, so you just go to 36, go to 36, and we know that this is the 36 payment, but what we're looking for, it is the closing balance after we make this payment. After we make 36 payment, this is our 36 payment, that will be our closing balance. As you can see, it answers the question that you were asked, which is option number three. Okay, so I've given you everything you need for now. Let's go and answer number three. So 22, 23, 24, now we are at 24. And question 24, it says also refer back to the same question that you had previously. Now they're asking you, how long will it take to pay off the loan if the farmer pays 7,500 monthly into the account, assuming that the interest stays the same? Now, you panic, don't panic, because now they're asking you for the period. How long will it take them? We know what the loan is. We know what the payment is, right? So we do have the payment. We do have the present value. We do have the interest. We just don't know how long, which is N. We have the interest and we don't know the N. So we don't panic, only those who who are going to calculate this manually might panic because you will have to use the formula and change. So here you will say second function, C, uh, sorry, that's the other thing I need to say. You don't have to change anything. Everything stays the same, right? On your question. So because they are related, the compounding periods are the same. Everything stays the same. Now, the only thing that changes is the payment. Your present value still stays the same. So you're going to press 7,500, and then you're going to press PMT on your calculator. These are financial calculators. So you haven't cleared your calculator from anything. After you calculated the previous question, you still have all the values, so you just press 7,500 and you press PMT and then you go and press comp 
and you press N. And when you press N, it should give you a value in a compounded number. So tell me what you see in front of you. Now I'm talking to those who are calculating using their financial calculator. What is the value that you see? Don't look at the answers. We're going to get there. What value do you see? If you cleared your calculator, let me know that I've cleared my calculator. Then I will give you the steps. In the meantime... No, I've also I've cleared my calculator. Okay, so if you cleared your calculator, still the same. Second function, CA. So we do the same. Second function, CA. Second function, P slash Y. And you press the 12 and you do ENT. Then you go on and off your calculator, plus or minus one of them, 7,500 7, or 250,000 present value, 7,500 PMT, and our interest was 18, which is INY, and you say comp, and you press N. Those who are calculating manually, gosh, that is the very complex thing to do. So our present value times our rate times one plus I to the power N minus one divide by <coughs> I times one plus I to the power N. Now, your challenge will be, how do you use the log? So now you will need to rewrite this, which might not be as easy as I thought. So let's see, it will be P divided by R, and you will have your one plus your I to the power N minus one, divide by I times one plus I divide by N. You will have to substitute the value so that you can. You will need to make N the subject of the formula. I will show you just now if we have time how to do that. But I want those who are calculating here to give me the answer. What is the answer when you do this? When you press comp N. Give me the value that you see in front of you. Don't look at the answers because then you go in to say, but I'm not getting the same answer that I'm seeing here. Don't worry about the answer that is on the board, on the screen. Mm -hmm. Give me the answer that you see on your calculator. 36.5. 40. 46.5. 46.5, right? So the answer you get is 46.5. Now, this says how long it they will take the um to take to pay off the loan, but the answers on here are in years. The answer you see here is a compounded answer of your period. Already, this answer is multiplied by the compounding periods. All you need to do is divide this by the number of compounding periods. We know that there were twelve because that's what we put there. There were twelve. So you just say 46.5 divided by 12, and then you will get the answer. So you just need to pay attention to that. So it is 3.9. So that is the answer. You just need to make sure that you pay attention to the option given. Are they giving it to you in months? Because if it's compounded monthly, it should be in months. If it's compounded quarterly, if they give you in quarters, then you know that it is in quarters. The answer you get will be in quarters. But if it's in years, then you need to make sure that you divide the answer you get for N divided by the compounding periods. And this happens when you do any questions relating to compounded interest, annuities, and amortization. Every question where they ask you to find the value of N or the how long, you answer the question of how long, always remember, 
if it was compounded only for yearly, if it's compounded yearly, therefore the answer you get is in years, then the answer will be in yes. So you just need to check if there are no disconnection between the two. Those who are calculating manually, you need to make sure that N is your subject of the formula, and that might take long because you, at the end of the day, you will have to use the log uh, to manipulate this entire equation so that N is the log, uh, N is the subject of the formula. So it means you will have to use the logarithm function. Okay. That is the only question that you might, it might take you long. If, if not, you might not calculate it in the exam. If you are going to sacrifice at least one question that you are not going to answer. But in terms of amortization, the others should be fine. Because you have the table. Okay, so. This is another example. I just want to check what time is it because we left with seven minutes. So this is another example of amortization. Now, you need to pay attention, guys. When you get closer to the end of your, your exam paper, especially the last three or four questions of the exam paper, they are about amortization. Therefore, all those questions are related to one another. Don't be quick to clear your calculator before you finish your exam. Any question that is related to amortization, there will be three or four questions related to that. Make sure that when you move to the next question, it's not related to that question before you clear your calculator. Pay attention to that. So exercise four, it says, um, Justin here bought the three house bedroom for 480. He paid the deposit of 150, so therefore it means the amount now reduced. And he secured the loan for the outstanding amount. The yearly interest rate on the loan at that stage was 24%. And it was compounded monthly. And the term of the loan was 20 years. Determine Justin's minimum payment. So we know that our present value will be 480,000 minus 150,000. That will be your present value. We know that our interest will be 0, 0,24, and you need to divide that by the compounding periods. There are 12. The year or periods. There are 20, and you will need to multiply that by 12. So let's go to our hack sheet so that we can complete this. Oh, it closed. Okay. I can go and open it again. They didn't realize that I closed it. Oh, I didn't close it still yet. So we're going to go. I'm going to use the same. So I'm going to say it's 480,000 because I can. Minus and now it means it changes your your sheet because I'm working on online. 480 minus 150,000. Let's see if this is 450. Yes. And we know that our interest was 24. And the number of years, they were 20. And it is compounded monthly, which is 12. So these are my compounding periods. And I've calculated my payment is 6,657. 6, Let's see. And that is option number one. Easy, net. Otherwise, 
you go and do second function, C A, second function, P slash Y. There are 12, E and T, on and off your calculator, plus or minus 330,000, that is our present value, And we go and put 20 second function and and again and 24. That is my interest. And I go come. And that will be come PMT. And that will give me my payment now. I need to answer the second question. I don't clear my calculator. Go to the next question and it says, relating to the previous question, determine the outstanding amount at the end of 10 years. 10 years compounded monthly, how many payments will that be? So you just need to say 10 times 12 and that should give you your, um, your next payment. So how many are they? 120 payments. Unfortunately, oh, unfortunately on our sheet, remember our sheet does not have 120. So you will have to work on that sheet because it ends on 60. And not up until 120, so I can just continue. I'm not sure if I can add more columns on this. It's, since it's online, I don't know how to do that online. Okay, let's see if, if it will still work. still works so you will have to add more columns insert rows can insert as many as i want and then i can drag this so that the number here gets 220 because that's what i need Huh, still, I'm still on 115, so I must still add more. Add, 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 add. Insert. And you just go to the top three because I need to keep the same calculations and formulas. And you just drag. And my 120, there it is. So what is the balance after 120? So that is 120. That is my payment at 120. Therefore, this is my answer that I'm looking for, which is 301951, which is option number three. And that's how easy it is. Otherwise, those who are using financial calculator, after you have your payment, remember you did the comp PMT, you wait there and you just say AMRT1 and then you go down arrow 1, ENT, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. You just even ignore all that because until you get to interest, then you go down arrow and you press 120. ENT, down arrow, 120 ENT, and down arrow, and it will show you balance, and that is the answer that you are looking for. That's how easy it is to do amortization. The next question also it relates to the same. So please don't clear your calculators. You have your payments. All you just need to do, 
you read the question, it says, suppose he has to pay 8,000 per month into the loan account from the start. How long will it take? We're still back to that, how long? So everything stays the same. How long if I change? You just press 8,000 and you press PMT. It will overwrite the original payment that you have. And then you just press comp. N and it is in years. You divide that by the compounding period and you can get your answer straightforward. If you cleared your calculator, if you cleared your calculator, then you're going to use second function, DA, second function, P slash Y, 12 E and T on and off your calculator, plus or minus. Now I'm going to put the 8,000 because it doesn't really matter. Any one of them can have a plus or minus, but only one of them. Plus or minus 8,000 and 330,000. That is our present value. And our interest was 24. And that was I and Y. And we just need to comp and and when you get that we divide it by 12. what is the answer and that will conclude today's session have you calculated the answer i'm still calculating Hi. okay so Hi. those who, Hi. Yeah, those who are calculating no, manually, I... i'm going to show you now so remember, this is the formula. So what I can ask you to do is copy this formula, only the formula, not, not the equal sign. Copy that, paste it somewhere, and please download, don't do anything to this. You must download it onto your machine, right? Because if you make any changes to this sheet, you're changing it for everyone. So don't work online. So you copy it and you paste it somewhere, and then, you come in here and you type 8,000 and you press equal and it will change everything and probably it will tell you when you will have paid everything up. Uh, let's see, where do we get a zero? The 89. So you take 89 and you divide, or is it 90? It might be 90, not 89. 89 divided by 2. So let's see. Equals 89 divided by 12. 7.4. So it is 90 actually. Sorry. Uh, let's see 90 because I haven't calculated it. I'm just, you know, which one will be the last one? Is it 89 or 88? When you use your calculator, what do you get? I think it's 88. Probably you do get 88. What do you get? Just 88.02. 88.02, right? And yeah. if you divide 88.02 by by 12, you should have 7.3, which is the answer that I get there. Because this there is no payment here. Uh, it will actually end on the on 88 because this is negative on this side. So that will be 88. So you just go and what, look at the last way before you get to the negative. But probably you need to use your calculators. And that concludes today's session because then I am way out over time. 
Uh, this is another question that you might get in the exam that looks like this, and it says first uh, find the size of the three monthly payment, then consider amortizing the, that payment and find the total interest. Yeah, it's very interesting. It says find the total interest charged over the first year of repayment. Reading the question, you should be able to, it says quarterly, so there will be four payments made per year. And this is for how long? So there will be just only four payments made. So you can calculate those and calculate the interest charge over those four first, first year repayments because they are just four. So you can do that. You can calculate them. Okay, and that concludes today's session, which the next session I see you will be on the 30th. I hope you have enjoyed the session and, and good luck with all your work. So let's just recap and finish off the session for today. Uh, by the end of the session, you have learned how to calculate the payment of an, annu uh, of an amortization loan. And you have you now know how to, to set up an amortization schedule. You need to practice, guys. Practice, 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 practice. You cannot just come here today and then wait until you go write the exam and then start practicing a day before you go write the exam. Using your financial calculator requires you to practice, finding more questions and doing the exercise. If you are stuck or you don't know what is happening, feel free to send an email. Feel free to ask on WhatsApp. I might not be the only person you can rely on. There are so many other people out there giving assistance in terms of QMI. You can ask them. Don't wait until it's too late and start panicking. Ask. Go through the work. This is math. We need to practice. The more you practice, the more you get better. Edit. Don't be shy. Okay, so. Conclusion. Are there any questions? Any comments? Are you still good? Are you happy? Talk to me before we end the session. Those who haven't completed the register, please make sure that you complete the register. Yes, Mildred Matebula, since there are two Mildreds in this room. And uh, I heard that. now yes. we yes we 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 received um, a number of um, sessions so far. I must say this was a tricky one, this amortization. But uh, with your assistance, uh, at least now we uh, can say that I will be able to answer it. Uh, uh, yeah, I will, the only thing I can say, I'll say thank you for your sessions, uh, helping me a lot. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Mildred, my table, you have your hand up. I thought you went to ask a question. Okay, good evening, everyone. Evening. I just want to know where can I access this report? Okay, so um, I don't know how you accessed the session for today. I'm going to go back to the um, thing here to share. I just need to close this, this cut that. Um, I don't know how you accessed the session for today, but there is a schedule that Unisa Paro shares with the students. If you go to that schedule and you look for your for this topic, which is basic numeracy skills, and you look for my name, but you might find me in different places. You just need to make sure that it's linked to your module. 
there is the join session where you join all the sessions and then underneath it there is the notes and recordings that's why i went to show you where to open the notes the notes are under that if you click on it it will open the notes for you i've got all the notes for all the sessions that we had and underneath the open notes and plus uh, open class notes folder there is recorded sessions they they are all of except there is one missing i've just realized that so this is where you will find the recording it will be loaded here but it takes time it takes about They said, is it 62 hours to 72 hours? I can't even remember, but it takes time uh, to get the, the, uh, the recordings loaded. And that is reasonable because there are so many other sessions that are happening on the same day. As you can see there, they are about one, two, three, four, five, six more sessions that were happening today. So they will need to make sure that they download them, clean them up, upload them, then share them on this site. So it takes time. All right, I'm gonna stop presenting and stop sharing. And I can say to you guys, thank you for coming and I will see you on the 30th. Okay, so the okay. other thing, wait. Let me check the recording. Stop.